friends i hope you all are doing well and i hope that you already went into the and studied more about the cardiovascular school diseases and particularly hypertension and that we did this or already discussed in last previous session and there are a lot of documents also present for your guidance and for your understanding on motor as well so have a look on the motor and read the documents as well now today next session that is related to the bone health today we are going to be discussing and particularly the osteoporosis so what osteoporosis is and how it can be managed and prevented by means of the nutrition and by means of physical activity we will discuss today so what are the uh, today learning outcomes objectives of the session are that at the end of the session you should able to understand and explain and can apply the rules of nutrition that is the diet and the physical activity in regard to prevent and manage the bone health that is related to the osteoporosis and the second one is to gain an overview of when osteoporosis can happen on aging, eating disorders, and female athlete triad. So first discuss about the word osteoporosis is what actually the osteoporosis word mean is. The word osteoporosis is plain, it means by itself. Osteo means bones and porosis means pores. And the meaning of this word is that increasing in the pores of the bone, inside the bone. This is called as the osteoporosis. While the normal structure of the bone, when we see by microscope or by an electron microscope, but it has not so much large and lot of pores inside the bone structure. So in this way, if the bone is more highly porous, it means it is less dense, while normally it should not be so much less dense. So this is the difference actually between the normal bone and the porous bone, and that's why it is called as the osteoporosis because it is not good for health. And take the example, if you were to hammer on this bone or any uh, structure that is the porous like this, so which will break before? this one or this porous one yes this porous one why because it is more brittle and less dense not enough uh, you know ha have a resilience and a strength in it that's why it is not good for our bone health and we can prevent it by many ways so what is a summary of today's session that we are going to be discuss that is osteoporosis can be prevented or not or is it the aging process yes or no and what are the risk factors can be identified by bone density screening test yes bone density can be identified some clinical test among which is main is the bone density test and the other is to observe the joints by means of x-rays and osteoporosis yes it is preventable disease it can be prevented though it is a aging condition because why because we usually observe in aging people that's why we are considering it as an aging condition but no other people can also can get osteoporosis and the reason is that unbalanced diet the next part is the conception of the balanced diet is very important and this is the reason that i told you about. So increase the and take adequate amount of the calcium in diet by means of calcium rich sources of food uh, along with the proteins and sodium as well but by natural supplementation not means that by only by artificial means but along with the calcium vitamin d intake and exposure to the sunlight is also very very important along with the active lifestyle if the person is taking vitamin D, have good sunlight exposure, taking calcium, good amount of source from their diet, but have sedentary lifestyle. So still the person is can be exposed to the extraporosis, can lead to be the osteoporotic bones. So who are at risk? Those who have the sedentary lifestyle, um, than females, 
is particularly women that are experiencing menopause. It means that their menopause have stops, it, which is indicating that the female hormone called the estrogen has been stopped. And estrogen hormone is very important and functioning to control the hypertension of the person and also related to the bone health of the women as well. So when person, the female, experience of uh, lacking the estrogen hormone, so they suffer from the menopause and also related some uh, bone health that is particularly the osteoporosis, but still it can be managed. Then some specific ethnic groups, like maybe because of some cultures, women cover by, uh, herself inside in a room or in a particular area with all coverings, so there is no sunlight exposure, or any geographical area where there is lack of uh, sunlight exposure is there, or by some uh, means of some culture or in some ethnic groups, their lifestyle is not good enough to maintain the bone health by means of the physical activity and diet as well. So these all are the risk groups that can lead to the osteoporosis. And they are obviously at high risk of osteoporosis. And now last is the female accelerator. Yeah, they are also have a high risk of osteoporosis. Why? Because this is a eating disorder in the woman observed in many research literature where it was observed that women are doing over-exercising, over-training, and restricting their diets, taking very less diet, so that they become self-satisfied to being more physically well for their maybe any purpose. And the other is then psychologically that they are not eating anorexia. Then the other is the amenorrhea. This can lead to the amenorrhea because the person is doing over exercise and training, less diet with restrict choices. Uh, so of course it can lead to immunoria. And this immunoria means that missing one or more menstrual periods or missing more consecutively. So this menstrual dysfunction lead to osteoporosis. Now, what is the role of the exercise in preventing osteoporosis? Is there a role? Yes. Example like weight training, walking, some aerobic exercises, dancing, playing tennis, some gymnastics. What they did, they make our joints and bone to function because our bones are attached with the muscle by means of the tendons to function. So it becomes they activate the cells to become more strength to, for our tendons and muscles to function and even bones as well. Because by the functioning, our bone cells inside called as the osteoplast, osteocytes and osteoplasts, they become active. So the bearing and treating bone in the side and osteoplasts in the cell produce more new healthy bone when the old bone has been removed by the osteoplast cells. But if we are not functioning, we are not so much active and have sedentary lifestyle, then these osteoblasts are not becoming functional to produce more new good bone. And that's why bone becomes more porous with time to time. And then the less strength of the tendon, so less strengthening of the bones as well. So these are the two reasons. So regular exercise is important. Regular exercise in adulthood can increase the bone strength. And this is the reason. Now, next point is the role of exercise in prevention of osteoporosis. There are more points? Yes. Yeah. How? Because, okay, it's fine. We say it uh, becomes, uh, it can uh, causes results to increase the activity of the osteoblast cells that produces the new bone, also strengthening it. But what happened in the case of the women who have menopause? Because in menopause, they are facing they are uh, facing the deficiency of the estrogen hormone that is produced inside the body as a female hormone, and that really uh, you know regulates menses of that female as well. But with this specific case, then this specific female hormone stops to release to function to produce inside the body, and this hormone is very good for the cardiovascular health and the bone health of the female. So 
within these five years after the menopause, females usually face the period of the osteoporosis. But in some researches, it is proved that after this five years phase, if women maintains their normal exercise activity can slow down the osteoporosis. This process of getting loss of the bone structures, the bone loss from her bones. So it is partly evident and it can be prevented, minimized in females who have menopause as well. Next is that the fall related fractures. Exercise also helps to reduce the fall-related fractures by improving the muscle strengths that are, of course, they are, you know, attached with the bones by the tendons. So providing the muscle strengths, bone strength, and tendon strength as well, and by maintaining the body balance. Lower intensity of the activities among the elderly can be also be done to maintain the bone health, such as by doing gardening, um, so walking, social dancing, and it is evident in many researches that they in uh, by these of such activities, it uh, the it results to decrease in the risk of the hip fractures. What happened that it exaggerated amount of exercise that among women does, and is it impact on the bone health? Yes, but how? because most uh, uh, exaggerated exercise can result to amenorrhea in the woman. What is mean by the amenorrhea? It means that it's stopping of one or more periods or that is the menses of, in the woman. So of course, then estrogen, the female hormones getting disturbed, so more bone health is also getting disturbed. Now I'm discussing another research and what the result of that research shows that the bone density benefits from the exercise combined with the intake of the calcium and uh, that is around 1000 milligrams per day. So it is concluded that bone density can be maintained by means of the both physical activity that is the exercise and by taking the calcium and the strength of the calcium would be 1000 milligrams per day. But remember along with it vitamin D is also very important. And why it is important to take calcium and vitamin D alongside simultaneously? Because calcium helps the vitamin D to get absorbed from our intestines into inside our body. Otherwise, a simple taking only vitamin D will not be sufficient. It may not be get absorbed so much, but in presence of the calcium, it will get absorbed and will, bones will get will, their nutrition by means of the calcium, vitamin D, potassium, magnesium and bone yeah and by exercise so what happened if the person is extremely inactive uh, like a person who is on prolonged bed rest in such cases severe bone loss can occur even the person is having a good high intake of calcium and other bone related minerals as well why because of the muscle dysfunction and no activity so all cells, if not be activated, will go to its dysfunction. So the final summary, we have discussed that osteoporosis, yes, can be prevented. How? By means of exercise and by means of nutrition as well. And what are the good sources of the nutrition are? Like um, dairy, milk, that could have both calcium and vitamin D, yogurt, Egg, they are the good sources and along with the exercises. Persons at risk can be identified by bone density screening tests. And the last is that um, more active lifestyle, it's mean more healthy, bone is healthy. And then the final is the sunlight exposure. It is also important because vitamin D inside our body, okay, get absorbed by the intestine, everything has done, but it becomes activated in the presence of the sunlight. The other main point I want to discuss, share with you that it why it depends on the ethnicity as well, because how much the dark skin of a person have the more chances of the osteoporosis in comparison to those who have the skin is not so much dark. 
The reason is that on our skin, we have a special cells that give the color to our skin, like brown or black, that are called as the melanocytes. And what they do, they stop the sunlight to get absorbed inside our body. And that's why vitamin D is, should, uh, is not to be able to convert into the active form. And vitamin D to function to inactive form, sunlight is important. Um, now here I'm sharing with you the recommended reading the sources. Please have a look, read these resources after this session and discuss among yourselves as well and in the next session with me and in comment session as well. And this is another task that I'm giving to you that please discuss the vegetarian diet and fish originated diet um, which are rich in the calcium along with the physical activity. Is there any rule? And please provide the evidences as well by means of some valid sources, like some research articles. Thank you so much. We'll meet you in the next session. Bye bye. Thank you. If any question, you can just email me or comment me below in the comment section. Thank you to listen.